Well, for those who don't know me, my name is Jahazel. I'm a Christian rapper. Um, I've been in, in Christian rap for about like 12 years. Um, kind of from the fringes of just kind of sitting behind artists like MOD when I first started and stuff like that and then kind of putting out my own album and, and, and ministry growing from there, traveling around and meeting um, you know, tons of people. But um, more recently starting up a, a movement with a couple other artists called Forerunners and myself, ETIS, do them true to the name and um, and I'm signing with a label out here. So that's kind of my story. Now being somebody from as, as we like to colorfully say, the other side of the pond. Have you been surprised at the reaction and the reception from people in the States? Or was it something like, man, I honestly expected, you know, mm. how, how has that been for you? Mm. Especially over the course of the last 12 years. Okay, yeah, I mean, um, the response has been really kind of um, positive generally, you know what I'm saying? Anytime I've come over here and people have been exposed to my music, um, I've got so much feedback that people have, you know, been like the music from a musical point of view but also been um, encouraged by the, the message and the music and, and you know on Facebook and Twitter and what was MySpace back in the day like just received a whole lot of um, response and um, support really from people over here and this, I almost say it surprised me um, I think music is a universal language you know what I'm saying and people can appreciate it no matter what your background is um, and I've always been a fan of good music and good hip hop music at that. A lot of it which came from the states that you know I grew up listening to. So I just tried to make stuff that was on par with the stuff that I liked. So it didn't really surprise me that people liked it because they liked the stuff that I like. So although, although I'm on, as you said, the other side of the pond, musically, I probably listen to exactly the same things that they, they grew up listening to. So, yeah. Right, now, now within all of that brought your you, you being the, the the newest member of the existing mm -hmm. along with uh the truth and ambassador how'd that come about so i i i've long been a fan of um like the early cross movement stuff and deuces solo stuff true stuff i would long been a fan of that really been inspired musically and the message of their stuff um that was really powerful so um you know i would met with them and built relationships with them at the times that they came over to the uk and whatnot, and um, to be honest with you, I was kind of unaware that they were um, that they appreciated my music and what have you. It wasn't really conversations we had that much. Um, but um, my manager Sharice, um, she's kind of the more middleman between the two of us. Who was kind of making calls over there and talking with those guys as managers do. I think originally it was about maybe getting on a tour with one of those guys. Um, and the subject came up about perhaps me getting on the label. I think Sh her and Sean had that conversation and they were open to it. Um, and so they kind of hooked it up without my knowledge, to be honest with you, I didn't really know anything about it. But by the time I did hear about it, I was really encouraged by it. Because I was at a point where I was kind of wondering. Um, I, I started working full time at church. Uh, my family's expanded, having children and stuff. And like, um, my ability to give as much time to the music as I was given previously was was becoming more difficult. So having a label's input at this point would have been, you know, was just the right timing for me because financially and time-wise, I just didn't have the the energy to really put into Jam you know So mm -hmm. having a team behind me that's going to take care of all that stuff was a, a, a real a real blessing. Man. So that's kind of how it came about. Cool. Now and then it was. Uh, I'm telling you, it was through that connection where you landed on uh, the Truth album, and you were on the. Uh... Well, it was. Uh, do you know what? It, that was even before the, the signing thing. Okay. Yeah, because um, I hollered at Truth and Ambassador for um, a remix of the, the same song, um, "I'm Alive," which is on Truth's the whole Truth album. Um, it was actually on my mixtape, um, "Still Living," which came out um, several months before that. Um, I hollered at Truth and Deuce to get on that and, and praise God they got back to me. Whereas, I mean, I, I threw it out to a lot of people, so shout out to all the people that hollered back. Um, but they got back to me with their verses and, um, and, and really blessed the, the, the track. Um, then Truth, when he was doing his, asked, well, could I use the beat to do another version of it for, for his album and he keep my verse on it? I was like, praise God, let's, let's do that. So that's how it came about. Now, on that verse, you... Uh you kind of opened up a bit. You, oh, no you, you you definitely opened up a bit, pretty much within the same vein that Truth had opened up within the, uh, you know, just with, with everything that went with his, you know, mm -hmm. with his story mm -hmm. uh, as of late with the you know fall and redemption and you know that that rise again. And within it, you talk about your own 
fall away from that. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of walk us through that a little bit? Just yeah, what, yeah, what was definitely, happening? definitely. I mean, I've always tried to be um, transparent and to be real with both my highs and my lows. Do you know what I'm saying? Like when I first started listening to Christian hip hop, it was a lot about slaying demons and stuff like that. And I always kind of listen and thought, um, my experience of the Christian life isn't like what I'm hearing on these songs. And I was like, if I'm gonna make songs, I wanna make stuff that, you know, is is really my experience, whether that's good, bad, or ugly. So I've kind of always tried to be real like that. And basically, um, I kind of found um, there was a, a time in my, my my ministry where my priorities was was mixed up. Which I'm saying that whereas. Um, my family was, was kind of playing second fiddle to my ministry and the consequences of that was breakdown in communication between me and my wife it, it led to to me um having um well, a secret life as it were but outside of my marriage like i was um getting involved in internet pornography and stuff like that um and, and all sorts of other different issues like just being just a poor steward of what god had given me and um and then kind of feeling like, man, I need to just put the brakes on and just get things put back in order really was kind of what that verse came about as. Um, now, mind you, it been slightly prior to the song coming out because um, I feel like you don't want to share your wounds <laughs> when they're so raw, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that, like, it just won't be encouraging for me right. to it's talk about gushing that. blood. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I, so I, I took some time out um, where, you know, like I, I, I lead like a cell group at my house and I took some time out from, from leading on that, or uh, well, teaching on that, and um, I took some time out from just music really, just kind of pulling back and focusing more time and energy into my family, more into my local church and, and whatnot. Yeah, and um, you know, I got to a point where I feel like, okay, with the mixtape, I'm ready to kind of you know, get back out and, and be public about that and, and be candid about why I took the pause as well, you know what I'm saying? And, and encourage other people to hopefully do the same because you don't have to like be a train wreck and hit, you know what I'm saying, a brick wall before you say, okay, let me take some time out now. So, um, yeah, um, I guess that's kind of what I was speaking about in the first. And although it was different issues, I suppose, specifically to what Truth or Deuce had dealt with, it, I think the priorities thing was was just the general, you know, link that we we all kind of found ourselves in positions where we we, we mixed up our priorities and suffered the consequences of it. Yeah, because I love how you say I didn't fall like them, but I fell yeah. all the same. My fall wasn't as public. Straight, straight. And straight. yeah, I, I loved I loved the, the 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 candor that you showed there, and like and kind of showing the mirror back on people. Yeah. Even from yourself, like. I still got grace for them because I didn't do what they did, but I did something. Yeah, absolutely. We can all say that. Right. We can all say that to one degree or another. Right. Who hasn't sinned before the short of the glory, you know what I mean? This kind of takes it a little turn for an extra two minutes, but um, Sorry. on the wrestling with the, you know, the, the, the internet pornography, because there are a lot of guys, I mean, especially people who, especially people who are, who are in music, especially in our scene, because... Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of support from brick and mortar stores. We don't have a lot of support from big backers. And, and as we're building our buzz, as people are building their buzz, it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. You're, you, can, you can go anywhere and basically be three clicks away from, uh, from internet porn. So what was your, just briefly kind of just tell us, what was your path like coming back from wrestling with that mm -hmm. to, uh, from, from falling to still successfully wrestling with it still? No doubt, no doubt. I guess the first point was, was um, like as I was saying, my verse was saying I went to my pastors, um, as in just basically confessing, do you know what I'm saying? And, and it wasn't that they blew me up. I went to them and said, look, fellas, this is where I'm at, do you know what I'm saying? I was very real about it. Um, so I think that was the first step. And the second step was being accountable, um, both being accountable to my pastors, to my friends, um, like close friends, obviously. Um, um, even practically um, connecting to a, a, a website, an accountability website that um, would give like my close friends or whoever I put on the list a report of my um, internet activity, you know what I'm saying? Was that x3.com? x3.com, right. So I had that both on my, my phone and my, I still do on my phone and my laptop and my PC. So just taking those kind of practical steps and um, I, think, I think just acknowledging the fact that it's not 
<clears throat> it's not something that's going to disappear. It's it's a, it's an injury that you're going to carry for life and accommodating for that. And when I say that, what I mean is just being wise about positions you put yourself in, relationships you, you put yourself in. Do you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. just knowing that, you know, it, I don't know, if I was a recovering alcoholic, it just wouldn't be wise for me to hang out in a pub um, or bar, whatever you call it. You know, just being real about where I'm coming from means I've got to make wiser decisions about where I go to. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think just, just with those three, I think, um, you know, you, you can be, and obviously, just by, by prayer and, and 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 having the Lord as your your, your first love and, and really pursuing Him, um, you can you can live successfully free of, of any addiction. Now, with the forerunners, tell us about what's going on with that. That's kind of like a, it's, it's kind of like the, the the London Super Friends. Of that. <laughs> tell us a bit about forerunners project. Forerunners, yeah, I'm really excited about forerunners, man, because like, <clears throat> as well as being an artist that. Um, I really like, you know what I mean, I love their music. And by the way, it is when he was saying that talking about his albums being mad humble. I think his albums are sounding absolutely phenomenal. And um, there's something on there for everybody, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but um, true to the name as well as another artist from Forerunners who, um, you know, he's got an EP coming out real shortly, yours truly, which is again sounding really crazy. Um, and yeah, I'm, I, I, they're brothers that I love, they're brothers that we fellowship together, we make music together. And um, we wanna, we've got another two young cats that's coming up called Armour and Brandon. Um, and you can check them out for probably the best place to check them out is um, gospelcypher.com, which is um, like a UK wannabe rap seller, not really. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, like check them out on there, check all of us out on there. But um, we're gonna get an album out, God willing, we're, we're trying the end of the year. I don't wanna put out no dates that I'm gonna get in trouble for. But we're trying at the end of the year to get something out. The the um, needed daily remix for to Dashes was like a little taster, you know, for people to get with. But um, but yeah, look out for that real soon, man. Forerunners. Um, also as well, I guess you're gonna go on to ask me my own album as well. I'll be working on. I'm really grinding on that one. I'm trying to hook up with, with producers that are just making something that I like. To be honest with you, I, I put it out to a lot of producers and um, I haven't really got back that much so I'm here on Rapzilla plugging if you like my music or you think you got what I need please holler at me like I don't know if it's cool for a rapper to beg on video but I'm gonna ask really nicely please holler at me if you got something fresh for me I don't have a lot of dough but what I do have is love so um, come and I'll give you some love you give me some beats and we'll make history any last words man anything you wanted to uh any last words? Um, just to say, I'm just glad to be here, man. Re like, really, really inspired to be here, man. Just to, you know, us in the UK is still kind of a developing situation, you know what I'm saying? Um, Christian hip hop is kind of quite newly introduced generally to, you know, a lot of churches, but it's, it's growing quickly. Um, and I'm really encouraged just to kind of be here and peep, okay, where are we heading towards? You know what I mean? And, and getting advice and um, learning from examples, you know what I'm saying, of guys out here who are kind of further down the line. Um, and just seeing how it's remained Christ focused. It's something that young people from all different backgrounds can plug into and get busy for Jesus with their gifts in all different kind of ways. And uh, yeah, man, just inspired, man, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Butchering your name. Tell us, how do you pronounce your name? Jahazel, it's three syllables. Oh, you could technically say Jahaziel, but Jahazel. Jahazel. So just like how it's spelled, Jahazel, like not Jahaziel, Jahaziel, Jizzle, Jahozil, Jehoshaphat. Jahazel. <laughs>